Pedro. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody. This is, today is April 26, 2024. Probably our second Hi. night going live tonight. What got, was that? We got my wife here to, um, Hey, what are you doing? Huh? What? You got my wife here. I know she's trying to fix the camera. Hi, I'm cooking. Bye-bye. I'll be back. <laughs> um, then we got, I got my son here, Joel. My other son is not feeling too well tonight. Uh, he'll be with us next time. Tonight, kind of, there was a word kind of laid on my heart tonight. Kind of struck something in me while I was um, in the shower, in the room, kind of all day to day. And I was talking to someone today, one of my coworkers at the job, feeling kind of down, gave a word of encouragement talking about how love covers a multitude of sins. Yeah, that's so true. And many of us deal with holding on to things and not being able to let it go. I wanted to talk about today on there is freedom, what there is forgiveness while you're in Christ Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Having a spirit of forgiveness is not just a uh, spirit attribute, but it is a natural attribute as well. I was talking to this coworker today and the word came to me. It stood out to me, love. The word love stood out to me today and the other word that stood out to me today was how can you, the word says in 1 John, how can you love God who you haven't seen and hate your brother who you have seen? And when I, when I, when I talk to this coworker about that, and I said, sometimes things happen in our life and we may don't understand why it happens. Why these situations come upon. Why do I have to forgive? Why can't I just keep things in me? Sometimes we got to let things go. But not only forgive, I was thinking, instead of trying to, the Bible said, pray without ceasing. Pray always. Yep. I to be pretty <laughs> Pray, I love my wife and I, I love my son here. I, I cherish these two kids and I love my wife and instead of trying to pray for someone to come back we need to pray that God is able to 
keep them and secure them wherever they're at. Amen. Abraham was in a strange country. Um, Abraham was in a strange country. Didn't understand where he was going. God led him out of a city that he didn't understand where he was going at. Mama don't go went and told him. I know. And and the word said. Yeah. And it, it 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 struck something in my spirit, man. It, it it struck something heavy. That I just kept dwelling on it, dwelling on it all day long. The word is forgive. To let go of the past and move on to the future. The word also says a brother offended is a city that is lost. Us as men of God and women of God, we have to stand on the love of God. We have to stand on love. We have to stand on the forgiveness of God. Because if we were like God, if we were God, I don't think that we could be able to handle the love that God paid the price for all of us. The word said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. Now God has sent his only son into the world to be a representation of how man should live. The word is so empowerful. It, it inquires. The Bible said, I was reading to this coworker today, and I told the I told this to the to her, and I said, Trust in the Lord and lean not on to your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge him in all that you do. And her response to me was Isa, are you a pastor? Now, I don't exalt myself or try to boast. And I tell people, in order to become that, you have to love people first. You got to love God. with all. First and foremost, love God. With all your heart, soul, mind, and spirit. That's vertical. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. That is a horizontal connection. <laughs> oh boy. I love, I love and I'm grateful for my wife. Um, many of us don't even talk and acknowledge our wife at times because we beneath we, we 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 think that we as men are over and and we, we 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 actually think that we like to rule and reign and 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 try to maybe I'm not saying the right word but 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 in reality we like to to take be in control and and look at look at them as they're at the bottom of our feet. The Bible said he created male and female. That means that we're all equal in the sight of God. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, God, some people may bash me on this, boy. Amen. But the love of God is what stands. The love of, the love of people is what stands. You got to have a servant mentality before you can be able to become a shepherd. Mm -hmm. David was a shepherd's boy. He had to learn how to serve first. I'm so grateful for a family that as we grow as we, we, we are one not grow we are one and as we grow closer to God God begins to reveal each other to each to us who we are who are we what is the purpose that God has called us to do Tradition says you got to be like this in order to make it into the kingdom of God. The word of God says to come as you are. It's not how a person looks. It's not how a person smells. It's not how if a person dresses with the best suit or don't have the best suit we still got to learn how to love learn how to love first before you can be able to do anything god has made disciples to go into the world to preach the gospel to the poor We're not called to just sit down and not do nothing for God. We have a kingdom that is, that is arising. God is coming back soon. We don't have time to be fighting and bickering and, and trying to hurt one another. We got to learn how to love first. If you love God, you know how to love other people. Because he teaches you how to love them. Yes, we in the world that we live in that is full of hate. That can't trust nobody. That says, oh, if you do this to me one time, you will do it to me again. The devil is a lie. Learn how to love. Love covers a multitude of sin. That means that love is so bright and so shining, so heavy, that it covers the sin that is around you. We're not here trying to hurt. We are of his kingdom. And when you have a kingdom mindset, you're able to... Act. To, 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 to do as the kingdom says to do. The Bible said if they persecuted me, who are you not uh, 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 to think that they won't do the same thing to you? I thank God for a mother that raised us. With respect. Rest in peace. I love you, Mom. I know you're looking down. And I'm thankful for being obedient in what she has told me to do as a son. Now, yes, we, we might don't. We as um as that have parents. Might don't do everything that our parents tell us to do. But our parents never stop loving us. They correct us because they do it in love. They don't do it to hurt you, but they do it because they want you to be a better individual.
Thank God that I was raised up from my grandmother, my step grandmother. I know that you're 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 out there listening as well. That have taught us to say yes, ma'am, no, sir, yes, sir. Thank God that you told us. I remember those days that you would tell us that we had to brush our teeth at eight o'clock and be in bed by eight thirty. Be ready for church. Turn off all TVs. Lord, I, I, I just, I thank God that I have parents and men and women of God in my life that have taught me how to love. And people have taught me how, how to say, hey, Isa, this is how you love and this is how not to love. Judgmental, judge, judgmentalness is not going to get us to a place in heaven. Hurting one another is not going to get us to a place that is going to think that we made it or think that we're going to get there because of this. The Bible says, let the word be a mirror on our life we got to reflect who we are first are we right with god then we're able to go out and 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 live out what god says charity starts at home thank god uh for a apostle <laughs> that says spoken by the word of God charity starts at a, at home it don't start in the street it don't start in the in anywhere else if you if you don't have love anywhere else amen <laughs> it starts at home and then it it abroads itself out. If, if I say that I love Joel and my actions don't fit up with what my sayings are, I'm a liar. <laughs> if I say that I love God and I hurt my brother, then you're a liar. If I tear somebody's morale, character, the Bible said love. We got to learn how to love first before we are able to live out this Christian experience. Christ-like. People see your reflection, your light on the job, on how you live your life. Not by what you say, not by how well a person can preach, not by how well a person can prophesy and, and, and do miracles, tongues, interpretation. But if they don't have love, Paul said you are nothing. nothing. Amen. I'm talking even to myself. If I don't learn how to love my wife, I'm a liar. If I speak negativity upon my family, knowing that God has made me the head of my family, God is going to come back to me and say, what have you done? What actions and what attributes are you living? What are you doing? Are you out there doing what God has told you to do? Or you're, or you're living this fakery? Well, we, need, we need more people that are filled with love. Not filled with hate, disappointment, argument, gossip. Manipulation. 
but learn how to love where people are at. Don't judge them because, oh, they might have smoked today. Don't try to say, oh, oh, they ain't going out. They ain't going out. But, 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 but live your life for them to say, hey, this person, this person is living according to what he is saying. If we're preaching in, 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 in the pulpit and don't have love, what are we? The Bible said we're a timbling brass. We're nothing. If we're hurting one another and not growing, that's not love. Paul illustrates and he demonstrates how important it is to love one another. Learn how to love first. Love starts at home. Not religion. Religion says you got to do this to make it. God said live this way. God said love. Show show yourself that is that that you're that you're of me. God said what greater love than a man to die for his friend? How much love is that? To lay down your life for an individual. Oh, nah, we'll say nah, we can't do that. I got too much at stake. I got too much that I'm holding on to. But if God came back today, will we make it into the kingdom of God? Will God be pleased and say, well done, my great and faithful servant? Or will he say, depart from me, I never knew you? Let's learn how to love one another. Let's learn how to get along with one another. We live in a world, every day there's something going on on the news. This killing is going on. This child did this. This man did this. Because we live in a world that has gotten rid of the love of God and gotten rid of the attributes of God. So now we're living in a world full of chaos. And we don't want to love. Because we as people are stubborn. And we say, uh uh. Look out for my family and forget about yours. Mm -hmm. Or 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 look out for my son and and forget about oh if your son and then if somebody hears you talking they'll go back and say oh man they're struggling. Mm -hmm. wrong they're dealing with a lot of a lot of situations and demons <laughs> instead of praying for one another pray for one another love one another encourage one another give each other strength in the in in, in the lord having a heart of gratitude Having a heart of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Not understanding everything, but learning. The Bible said you can be forever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You can keep learning and learning and not have love and still be lost. That's the danger part about it. We worrying about what this person is doing, wearing. Are they saved? Are they going to make it? When we when we need to be worrying about if we're, if, if we're able to get into the kingdom of God.
Because if we're not able to, if, if, if God is not happy with us, how can we, how can we save someone else? And how can you teach the child the same thing when you're not living according to what God said to do? Culture says, religion says, do this. But God don't operate by religion. God, God is operating on where a person's heart is. He says he knows the heart. He tried the reins. But yet was speaking. The Bible said death and life is in the power of the tongue. And we're speaking death over people because of things that have happened. Or things that have happened to us and think that that person has caused it. Instead of lifting that person up and saying, Lord, touch that person wherever they're at. Lord, bless them. Lord, give them favor. Give them love, Lord. Protect their family. Give them, give them the grace of God. But you know what we do? Lord, degrade them, Lord. When a person says they need prayer, they really need prayer. Don't just pray because somebody says to pray. You pray for them even before they even ask you for prayer. Yeah. Because uh -huh. you don't know that person's need at that time. Love is a topic. The greatest subject of a all is love. I'm thankful for a love for God. I'm thankful for a shepherd that teaches me and shows me and not reject me for who people may say that I was. But learns how to love and take care of the sheep like a shepherd is supposed to. I'm thankful for the love that she has in her heart. For people that she cries over daily, begging and pleading to God for mercy for our souls. Nobody knows what a what a pastor is going through when they're when they're at home alone. Nobody knows what a, what a, what what situations they're dealing with. Nobody knows how they feel and they might need a word of saying, hey, how are you doing today? But you haven't even called that person. Sometime we got to, the Bible said, leave your ministry at the altar and make it right. Just a simple sorry. I messed up will make things right. God is waiting on us to show love to the next person that is in need. Let's show love, people. Let's show love. Joy, you got anything you want to say? Um, I hope everybody was listening and took something from it. I have a question for you. What do you know about love? Um, it's a natural thing. Natural thing. What you mean, a natural? Okay, let me see if I can get this camera off without cooking pretty much. Mm. Well, oh, the reason I was in your drink. Reason how it's natural is because um, when you walk around. Uh huh. And then, if you talk to people, if you meet, if you talk to people and you're not 
Like, if you if you want to all be alone, and then you just don't talk to new people, if you talk to them first, then you'll discover if they're for you or not. Okay. Okay, so you know the difference between real love and fake love? Mm-hmm. Okay, how do you know what fake love is? Because a lot of people don't know. If, um, say if, say if um, you're married to a girl, um, fake love is that if they use you for money. When you're a boy, <laughs> That's what I'm okay. talking about. That's true. That's okay. what I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> Give me my. <laughs> we just heard the. Uh, that's this is this is this is our next prophet here. People that don't believe. He spoke into my life. Didn't understand. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't understand, but. The, God gave him a word and it touched my soul so deep. Yeah. I mean, to the point of, I didn't understand what was going on. Sometimes you just need that word of encouragement, of love, to know that you're doing the right thing and that you're going the right way. And the clarification that God has downloaded into this young man here. It's so incredible. I know right now, he's nine years old right here. But I believe when he gets about 11, 12 years old, I believe that his manifestation, or even next year, his manifestation will come upon. A child. God can use a child to speak to you. But sometimes we we, we 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 as people begin to look down on them because oh they don't know nothing. They're young, they're of youth. David was a young man. Gideon, Jeremiah, all of these prophets of God and and, and people surpassed them and looked past them because they thought they didn't know what they was talking about. And, 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 and when you sir look God's people. God begins to move them from your, from your life. Because the Bible said, if you don't receive the word to kick the dust off of your feet and keep it moving. I'm paraphrasing now. <laughs> That means if I don't receive the word that this young man have told me and know that it was of God. Who am I to question who God can speak through and who he can't? God used a donkey to speak to people. If he can use a child, a donkey, who else can God use to speak to you? That is right there, maybe in your household, in your ministry, and you're not hearing from God. And we're surpassing it because we're not hearing what God said. The danger of it. That's This is my son here, boy. I, I claimed him already. <laughs> Uh, baby, you got anything you want to say? No, sir. I was just, you know, I was on my little sideline over here making my little comment. Um, I'm just I'm thankful for on. this for my wife. Um, many people are not, they, they surpass their wife and they don't give honor where honor is due. Sometimes your wife just needs to hear that she's doing a great job as a wife. Sometimes a wife just wants to hear she you love her. It's the simple words, the small things that can make things such a big difference in your marriage, in your life. Amen. That can say, you know what? Hey, he does love me or he don't just look at me like 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 I'm under him or 
or just because I might be a pastor, that, that don't mean that God can't use her. God uses anybody he chooses to get his word across. He used Esther. He used Ruth. He used all these women from the Bible. Who are we to say that God can't use any anybody? We have to be careful as people touching God's anointed people. The Bible said, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. I remember one day I was I was in the kitchen and and some no I was at the job. Situation happened that I had that not that I had to do it, but I wanted to. And the Bible spoke to me about my wife because she's a prophet too. God spoke to me about that, and He said, "You bless the prophet, I'm gonna bless you." I said, "Oh my God, what was that?" Amen. It's the simple things. If a man is not running the household the correct way, God removes him. If if the woman ain't, he removes. It don't it don't matter who it is. We're all irreplaceable. Mm -hmm. God is no respecter of persons. He don't look at a person and think. He's big, strong, uh, in shape, not in shape. Eat, eat hot dogs and eat uh, grapes. <laughs> yeah. If that person can walk, if that person can't walk, if they're in a wheelchair or they're not, it don't matter who it is. God uses everybody. Everybody. We cannot look down on each other and think that we're something because we are all irreplaceable in the sight of God. Let's learn how to love. That's all I got to say. I'm done. All right. You sure you're done? I'm you done. Sure? Yeah. <laughs> you, you have fed us with the fire tonight. So you sure you're done? I'm done. <laughs> okay. All right, y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in for tonight. Don't forget to like and follow. And also, um, subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Pharrell Family. We love you guys. Go ahead. Hey, Mama Tammy, I see you now. I like to say this. Hi. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Go ahead and do this.